What's up guys, DK here with Collector's Impact, and today it's time for another MetaZoo lore video. In today's episode, we're going to cover the Jersey Devil as well as a new fan favorite from the Nightfall set, the Headless Horseman. This video is part of a running series regarding the lore for the cryptid monsters that are featured in the MetaZoo card game. Of course, these are the actual legends and lores associated with them. And for more videos in the series, check the link in the description. There's a playlist in there. You can browse it and see if there's any other episodes you might be interested in checking out. All right, now with that said, let's go ahead and jump into the Jersey Devil. So the Jersey Devil, without a doubt, is New Jersey's most famous cryptid monster. There have been sightings of the Jersey Devil dating back from the early 1700s all the way up until the present day. In fact, there have been over 2,000 reported sightings of the Jersey Devil from then until now. The creature is commonly reported to be a flying bipedal creature with a horned head that resembles that of a horse, hoofed feet that resemble that of a pig, and spiked wings that resemble that of a bat. Its body is purported to be like that of a kangaroo, and it's well known for letting off a blood-curdling scream when it's in the area. The origins of the Jersey Devil are a bit questionable as there are multiple origin stories, but there are two that have been told and passed down the most, so we'll go over those today. The first origin story dates back to the year 1735, when a woman named Jane Leeds, also known as Mother Leeds, of the Pine Barren region of New Jersey, was pregnant with her 13th child. She had had 12 children before, and when she found out that she was pregnant with her 13th child, it sent a bit of rage through her, and she actually cursed the child, saying that she thinks that it's going to be of the devil. So it is alleged that on the night when Miss Leeds went into labor to give birth to her 13th child, there was a tremendous thunderstorm in the area. The thunder that night was so intense that it said that it caused an earthquake-like shaking in her house as she was giving birth. After a few hours in labor, her 13th child was born, and at first he came out like a normal human being. But within minutes he started writhing on the table, and he apparently started to change shape. His head grew to that of what looked like a horse with horns. He sprouted wings like a bat, and his feet turned into hooves. And at this point, there are two versions of the story. One says that he attacked and ate the doctor, the mother, and anyone else that was present in the house for his birthing. And the second one says that he simply flew around the house, but both result with him flying up the chimney and becoming a permanent resident of New Jersey and terrorizing the area for many centuries to come. It is alleged that the neighbors called a priest into the area to do an exorcism on the forest to try and rid themselves of the Jersey Devil, but of course, to no avail, it completely failed. The second origin story is not as intense as that one, but it simply states that in the year 1778, during the Revolutionary War, there was an American girl who fell in love with a British soldier at that time, and during one of their love affairs, she actually became pregnant with his child. When the local townspeople found out what had happened, they had cursed her and the child. So when the child was born, he was apparently born as the Jersey Devil and flew off into the wilderness. Very similar to the other story, just a little less intense. Either way, there is of course no evidence to support either of these stories other than the fact that the first one was published in a newspaper in the 1700s, and that was truly the origin of the story, though there was no actual resident by the name of Jane Leeds, but there are allegedly some other similarities from residents at that time. Either way, those origin stories are viewed as folklore entirely. But the Jersey Devil himself, with over 2,000 sightings spanning for many centuries, is viewed as a very legitimate cryptid monster. One of the more famous sightings of the Jersey Devil took place in the year 1820 by Joseph Bonaparte. Yes, that is the older brother of the actual Napoleon Bonaparte. He was hunting game in the woods of New Jersey and claims to have seen a flying devil creature out in the forest at his Borlandtown estate. He claims to have seen it fly overhead as he was hunting and it matched the description of the famed Jersey Devil. Twenty years later in the same region in the year 1840, the creature was seen again by some of the local townspeople, allegedly killing their livestock. For the next entire year, from 1840 to 1841, there were many claims from the townspeople that there were horrid, eerie screams coming from the forest late at night, and that there were also hoof prints found in the snow in the accompanying area. 
1909 marks a landmark year for the Jersey Devil, as this was the official year where he got his name of the Jersey Devil. Before that point, he went by many different names, but in 1909, there was a flurry of sightings between January the 16th and January the 23rd, which has come to be known as the Week of Madness. During this one week span, there were over a hundred people from the states of New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and even Maryland and Delaware that saw the Jersey Devil. Many farmers in the region claimed to have seen the creature trying to attack their animals. It also allegedly attacked men outside of a pub in Pennsylvania, as well as some police officers in Pennsylvania. It got to the point where the police officers apparently even discharged their weapons trying to get this beast. With the sightings becoming so rampant and the danger level getting to all-time highs, the authorities in New Jersey actually placed a $10,000 bounty on the animal that would be granted to anybody that could capture it, alive or dead, and turn it in. But after that week, the sightings greatly calmed down and the hype and hysteria dwindled a bit. Then in the year 1925, a New Jersey farmer claimed that a flying devil was trying to steal his chickens. In a fit of rage, he ran outside with his shotgun and discharged some rounds and actually took down the devilish creature. He allegedly took photos of this creature and shared them with over a hundred people in the local town. Now, where are the photos? Nobody knows. This was a hundred years ago, but still, you would think that something like that would have a little bit more evidence, right? especially considering that 1925 was not the end of the sightings of the Jersey Devil. Today in New Jersey, there are still sightings of this Jersey Devil. Its most notable characteristic, of course, is its extremely unsettling scream that can be heard in the distance at night when you are outside. So if you're ever in New Jersey and you hear a scream in the distance, maybe you should try following it. Bring a camera, bring whatever, and try to get yourself a glimpse of the Jersey Devil. All right, and the next and final story of tonight's video is featuring, of course, the famed Headless Horseman. In 1820, famed American author Washington Irving published his book, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. This book is classified as a gothic fiction, and in his book, he details the story of a redcoat Hessian soldier that was decapitated in battle during the Revolutionary War, and now he haunts the countryside of Terryville, New York. Irving's story focused around the character of Ichabod Crane, an oddball outsider that arrived in Sleepy Hollow one day. While he was there, he started to pursue a beautiful woman in the town named Katrina Van Tressel. And then Ichabod himself was pursued by the local phantom known as the Headless Horseman. But, while Irving's story may be fiction, there's actually some genuine history that gives some validity to the legend of the Headless Horseman in New York State. The website kitgentry.com features an article dedicated to the real story of Sleepy Hollow and the origin of the Headless Horseman. I present to you now the information contained in this article. The Origin of the Headless Horseman, Merritt Hill, and the Battle of White Plains. This is where the Headless Horseman lost his head, somewhere near this field on the slope of Merritt Hill in White Plains, New York, about nine miles from Sleepy Hollow. During the last week of October in 1776, this property was the site of hostilities between American and British forces during the American War for Independence. Today, a small monument topped with an antique cannon marks the site of these events, and a sign nearby describes the historic significance of the location. The sign reads, Merritt Hill, Spirit of 1776. This historic site is Merritt Hill, which marks one of the actions in the Battle of White Plains on October the 28th, 1776. During the attack on Chatterton Hill, the British marched up the road to Connecticut, Lake Street, to attack the left flank of Washington's defense assembled on Hatfield Hill, opposite Merritt Hill. General Heath, under General Washington, had placed Colonel Malcolm, his New York regiment, and Lieutenant Fenno with one field piece to station Merritt Hill in defense of Hatfield Hill. Lieutenant Fenno fired a cannonball directly into 20 British horsemen approaching Hatfield Hill. This single shot caused the British to retreat back towards White Plains. The historic sign shows details of a brief skirmish between American and British forces on October the 28th, but that's not the whole story. 
Other conflicts occurred near this site in the following days, and not only with the British. To assist the difficult task of suppressing their rebellious American colonies, the British brought along reinforcements in the form of Hessian mercenaries from Germany. It was one of these unlucky fellows who found himself in the path of an American cannonball that relieved him of his head. Washington Irving refers to the incident only briefly in The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, without identifying the precise location of the horseman's demise. And here's a quote from Sleepy Hollow. It is said by some to be the ghost of a Hessian trooper whose head had been carried away by a cannonball in some nameless battle during the Revolutionary War. It's entirely possible that Irving simply invented the entire incident for the sake of drama, without any knowledge of real-life events that occurred nearby. But it seems more likely that Irving had read the journal of American General William Heath, who described his defense of Merritt Hill on the morning after Halloween, November the 1st of 1776. In his journal, Heath recorded the following as his cannons opened fire at the approach of Hessian artillery. Quote, a shot from the American cannon at this place took off the head of a Hessian artillery man. They also left one of the artillery horses dead on the field. What other losses they sustained was not known. End quote. That is almost certainly the event that inspired Irving to weave a legend revolving around a headless Hessian on the ghostly horse. This is especially plausible since the battlefield was close enough to have been within riding distance from Sleepy Hollow a detail that fits the demands of the legend as described by Irving, quote, this is from Sleepy Hollow, having been buried in the churchyard, the ghost rides forth to the scene of battle in nightly quests for his head, end quote. So there you go, guys. The Headless Horseman actually does have some genuine history that could potentially be associated with it, and there are lots and lots of ghost stories in the area up there in New York, even including, of course, the Headless Horseman. Let's go ahead and end today's video with a poem by Jack Perlutsky from the year 1976 titled The Headless Horseman Rides Tonight. The headless horseman rides tonight through stark and starless skies, shattering the silence with his otherworldly cries. He races through the darkness on his alabaster steed. The headless horseman rides tonight wherever the fates would lead. Well guys, that wraps up the video for today. I hope that you enjoyed the lore behind the Jersey Devil as well as the Headless Horseman, and I hope that you have some new appreciation for the Headless Horseman, as it might not all be fake. <laughs> if you did like the video, please do remember to give it a nice thumbs up as it greatly does help this channel, and if you want to see more videos like this, as well as videos regarding MetaZoo card game and lots of other trading card games and cards as well, and things such as grading and all of that fun stuff when it comes to collectibles, definitely subscribe to the channel. Thanks again for coming by. I really do appreciate it, and I hope to see you back next time. Take care.